the, you guys are going to take this personal. Jalen Hurts is the biggest question mark because you know why? Hey, yeah, watch this. Jalen Hurts is the biggest question mark because Joe Burrow's the biggest question mark in Cincinnati. Josh Allen's the biggest question mark in Buffalo. Um, Justin Herbert is the biggest question mark in Los Angeles. Trevor Lawrence is the biggest question mark in Jacksonville. You're a good man, Sills. Appreciate the job you do, brother. Carmine, I appreciate you being here. By the way, guys, please hit the like button. We're trying to get to 255 likes today. That'd be cool, man. Chip called Deshaun Jackson a gang member. Man, please tell me that's not true. Basically because who he associated himself with, tried to rerun his career, ruin his career. Then Chip goes on to protect racist Riley Cooper. Damn. I don't know if he was going to protect racist Riley Cooper, but to call Deshaun Jackson a gang member. Man, I get sensitive with that because you call Italians, you know, mafia members. I mean, I don't really like that either. Elliot Shore Parks wrote the article. It went viral today on 2510 Podcast. This guy's a scumbag. So this goes back to his one of his boys, if I'm not mistaken. Help me out here because I heard the story through Michael Irvin. I guess when, and again, this is just me off the top here. You guys, this is in your world more. Um. In his past, he had a bunch of guys that were like gang members. One of them was killed and murdered. Now, was it his brother or was it his brother from that gang? I don't know that. And then I remember a story that came out in the inquir- came out in the Inquirer, and it got brought up. And then Chip piled on it. So let me get this right. You fire Torrentino, but you keep that guy who wrote an article about a Philadelphia Eagle guy. And you try to do something with a guy because he had something in his past happen to him. And you defined his past by his current status of where he is. Is that right? Only in Philly and only with the NFL media could you do some shit like that. He's not a gang member, but he has ties to people in his L.A. neighborhood. He's not a crip himself. I was in Chattanooga, Tennessee, when I saw the that LaShawn McCoy had been traded. I know. Kiko Alonzo. Funny because it was Josh Huff who got caught with the gun and weed. Has Deshaun ever been arrested? Hey, dude, I'm on his side. Um, just know this. d grew up in Long Beach. That's down where uh, Snoop is and all them guys. Chip used it as an excuse to dump him because he couldn't buy into his system. You know, I saw some shit like that. Somebody's put that on my, somebody's put that on my Twitter page about Deshaun talking about how Chip ruined him. Maybe does, maybe this is more just about foot. This is more than football here. With Deshaun. Djax is from Crenshaw, went to high school. Hey, you know what, guys? Hey, hey, um, 007, you want to hear something? Watch this. So my wife and I, we like going up to um, we like going up to um, Los Angeles to help people. I got I gotta show you this. And I think you'll understand. And um we went we went up we went up to we 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 went up to South Central and we brought a rugby team up there my wife did and it was one of the coolest things i ever went through in my entire life it was just absolutely a really great experience and we went up there let me show you this here 
Um, here we go here. Crenshaw. And we went to Crenshaw High. See this here? What I wrote? I really enjoyed talking to Crenshaw High School guys tonight. Um, I went up, I went up and the coaches asked me to come up and talk to the kids at Crenshaw. I went up there and they asked me, you know, the kids go, what is it like? And I go, Hey man, I grew up tough too. When I was a young kid, I grew up with my grandparents and my aunt. There's no excuses. Kids are looking at me going, I grew up with my, my, my grandma too. And I go, okay, welcome to the club. That's got nothing to do with white and black. I got Ice Cube sitting there. Daryl Strawberry went to Crenshaw. We're all sitting there talking, man. We're giving them, hey, don't use your race as an excuse. Yeah, and I'm racist. And there I am in Crenshaw. Invited by the high school football coach, Crenshaw High, to come up and talk to the kids. Don't use your race as an excuse. Use your willpower to win. There I was, my wife sitting there. We went out and played a rugby game with the girls. It was fantastic. One of the greatest experiences I ever had. Then we all sang after. We do it every year. I go up to Crenshaw High every year. Something maybe you don't know about me. Okay? 007. I go up to Crenshaw every year with my wife. They come down and play us, and we go up there and play them. We bring pizzas, have a great time with the kids. All the mom and dads are out there. You know, <laughs> I, it's funny. I tell the kids, I think you guys would like this. I tell the kids, you know, the kids down in San Diego are more like, you know what they are? They're more like my, my wife. My wife coaches like bookworms and like 4.0 students. And, you know, some of them are small and most of them are white. So they go like this. Wow. And I go. What, because they're black, you're a little afraid? She's like this. She goes, hey, man, you want to play in a diverse sport. You think, what do you want to do? Synchronize swimming? Those are all white people. I want to be in a sport with all white people. <laughs> you know, nobody wants to play in a polo club. Okay? You want to play where everyone's involved. Yeah, right. That's how you test yourself. Do you know, usually, I was the minority. Let me show you a picture of a football. <laughs> I was the minority on football teams. I, I was. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 it, 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 hilarious, too. Here, Cilio. Thunder. Hold on. Thunder pig. I was the minority. Hold on here. Let me show you this. Okay. What's the only picture? It, what, what doesn't fit in that picture? There, by the way, there's Carl Dunbar, the, the D-line coach of the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. What's the only picture? Who's the only guy in that picture that doesn't fit? I mean, come on now. <laughs> Who's the only guy in that picture that doesn't fit? That, that picture's racist. What do you mean? How come there's no more white guys? <laughs> come on, man. How come there's not more white guys in that picture? I'm the only, but then again, they probably when you're Italian, so you're not really white anyway. Oh, I was 335 pounds then too, dude. Crazy. <laughs> Send me that. <laughs> Xander wants that picture. Hey. I'm the I'm the only guy. Okay, I'm the only white guy in that picture. Okay, Xander. <laughs> hey, I'm the only white guy in that picture. And so when someone goes like this, yeah, here we go here. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone used to always go, silly man, you know. But then again, I was at Miami like that too, man. That shit was at at Miami. All my best friends, man, down there were, they were, you know, my teammates. I mean, 
Yeah, it wasn't like that. Here's the, <laughs> yeah, wait till you see the picture. That's what Big Sales was pushing 605 on his bench too, man. I was a big dude then. I thought you're not white. I'm not white. I'm Italian. You know, just heard Chip wanted to make a black player cut his hair. Ugh. You know how disrespectful Quest that is to make a black guy cut his hair or slap him on the back of the neck. It's disrespectful. Here's Big Sills here. There you go. <laughs> oh, man. That's 329 pounds. Of big sills right there. Yep, right there. 329 pounds, 605 bench, 800 squat right there with them draws pulled up too high. I look like a 65-year-old man in them draws. And by the way, that waistline is a little over 40. <laughs> uh, yeah, Jerome would be very proud of that picture. Holy cow. <laughs> oh, my God. Sills was looking like he wanted a piece of me. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. I got another one I'm going to send Xander. Xander may have seen this. Now, here, I'm going to send you. I'm. You know what? I shouldn't do this, but I'm going to. I'm going to send you a wrestling picture. Of big sills here. Then we're gonna get back on on the rails here. This is a little off the rails for me here. Okay, hold on here. This is a little off the rails here, but I'm gonna send you a picture of big sills. Please hit the like button, by the way. All right, here. Hold on. <clears throat> nah, those are my contracts. No, no, no. Oh my god. Where's that picture? Okay, no, not that one here. Okay, wrestling. This one's really good. <laughs> this one is when I'm in my heyday. Holy, but on to me. All right, Xander. I'm going to send this to you here. You're going to love this one. This is 340 pounds. Chip brought in Maxwell, a back that fumbled with the charters and run down DeMarco. Dude. I, I, that's a disgusting. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Chip Kelly's disgusting. I'm sorry, guys. I'll never bring that up again. He really did all these things. He's a racist. I hate to say that. I can't stand racist. Wait till you see this picture. The bone crush you. Still throws nothing away. I know, man. I know, and I should. I I know. Wait till Sander sees this thing. Holy cow, man. I'm at, hey, right here, I'm probably doing 500 pounds, three sets of five off my bench, and I'm probably squatting eight, 900 pounds here. I was one of the strongest guys in the world at this time. Oh, and, and, and if you really want to go into it, I was ranked 10th. Um, I was ranked 10th in Europe. In wrestling, it was. <laughs> I don't think my aunt's ever really seen these. CWA Cilio. Wait till you see this picture that Xander got here. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Look at that thing. It looks like a water buffalo. <laughs> I mean, look at that thing. I'm in my I'm in my gi. I look like a water buffalo. Look at the neck. Holy piss. Look at that thing. It's not a human being. Look at that. Still looking like a white. <laughs> I look like a tree stump. No neck. Amber alert. <laughs> ah. 
Yeah, here's 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 the ranking when I was in Europe too. So we'll do one more picture here. Davy Boy Smith, nah, man. I'm six two. Okay, Davy Boy's a little shorter. He's like five ten. Big seals of wrestling gear, Goomba tights. <laughs> I could never fit in those tights today, homie. Dude, I'm three forty nine there. I'm actually less today than I am there, but I was working out as you can see. Big Sills, hey, yeah. Look at this, man. <laughs> oh, my God. You're so... <laughs> uh, <coughs> That's the guy my wife married. Now she's married to this. It's, you know, it's not quite the same. My wife looks down and she goes, what happened to that guy? <laughs> oh, but on to me, man. <laughs> Yeah, you look like you're he. Oh, I hey, no, wait a minute, Jeff. Do you think Sills was a baby face? Sills was a heel. I'm oh, I'm the heel of Philly now. Nobody likes to see me coming, including Bob Lang. <laughs> Yum, Poppy, Senor, don't lose your man card. <laughs> oh, come on, Coach. Be nice. Don't be a meatball. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Let's be nice. I get excited seeing that photo. Hey, Barb. That's why they called me the bone crusher. <laughs> hey, hey, Barb. You think they call me the bone crusher because I'm a wrestler? I don't. <laughs> uh, don't make me angry. <laughs> uh, what is it? The bone crush for a reason. Big Sills was the. Um, I had a great time in Europe. I lived. I lived in Europe for a year. When I wrestled for um, WCW, WCW owned a thing called W um, WCW. And it was um, owned by Otto Wants. And they would bring over all the wrestlers like um, the Road Warriors and such. And we would wrestle with all those guys. And it's kind of where you cut your chops. And then you would go to New Japan with Tony Onoki. And so that's how I, and I wrestled. Then my grandfather, I'm probably thankful he did it because it was beating me up even more. I had just played seven years of football. Pro ball, and I just was like, man, I can't take that shit any long. Okay, nah, man. I was getting beat up. Steel cage match. We did that in uh, Japan, in Tokyo. Seals, you could have been a um, <clears throat> legion of boom, a legion of doom, WWF. Hey, man, I, w I wrestled in uh, Japan with Vader. Had a great time. All right. Let's circle back here. Let's get it back on the rails here a little bit. Don't forget, Farset is going to join us. Where are we on the likes right now before we move on? This is Hertz's fourth season starting. Got to make it happen now here, Jason. Got to make it happen now, man, where he solidifies it. We're at 145. Guys, I'd like to get to at least 200 by the top of the hour. Let's see if we can make that happen. I'm looking for 255 by the end of the program. Let's see if we can get to that. Um, Sills was the white Larry Allen. I don't know, man. Larry Allen was a little bit bigger of a dude. Let me finish up on this Chip Kelly thing. It's circling around. Why is it circling around? Is it because that Deshaun has been talking about Chip? Because it's 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 on my Twitter page. I mean, it's on my Twitter page here, and they've been posting it. On my Twitter page, what 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 has been significant about um, here? The truth about Chip Kelly from Deshaun. Um, why is and then here? Elliot Shore Parks almost single handedly destroyed Deshaun Jackson. I don't want to play because that's that's a copyright infringement. But wait, what sales you wrestled for WCW? Did you realize 
we could have bought WCW for two million in 2001. Wish I had the time machine, man. Um, he said Michael Vick cried worse from Chip than being in person. Like what? They're trying to stir the pot to screw up Chip's current coaching career at Ohio State, him being the OC. I saw him mention something. I'd never play for that guy. No way. No way. My teammates. Can you imagine being friends with Chip Kelly? No freaking way. No way. I'd rather play for John Gruden than that. John Gruden's ignorant. That guy is an opportunist. And there's a lot of people like Sapp and everyone that have come to his defense. Um, John Gruden. I probably wouldn't want to because I, I don't need the aggravation of my teammates going, you support this guy? No, I don't. Can he help us win? Sills, I know, I get it. So you know what? Like you know, my, my wife says it all the time. Hey man, if it upsets one guy in the locker room, why have it? What's the point? Right, dude. Hey, I love you know what? John Gruden and I were friends. I was in the room when he was hired with the Raiders. Um, Chip wanted players to wear heart monitors and pee in a cup all the time. This guy was this bad here? So let bygones be bygones. Enjoy Big Dom on the sidelines as Eagles security. <laughs> Luke, I like that. Big Dom's a legend, man. He's a freaking legend. Sales versus Iron Sheik. I never wrestled him. I wrestled Ken Patera. And I wrestled Road Warrior Hawk. He was number one ranked. I was number 10 ranked. He tried to coach men like boys. That's why college coaches traditionally don't make it. I'm here five minutes and he's got these kids. <laughs> Chip's an egomaniac. He's trying to get the Ohio State job when day shits the bed. I would never hire him. Gruden was an eagle at one time. Yeah, he was the OC when he got the Raider gig. Jason Peters said, Chip, Dip Kelly was bullshit guy. Wow. That's all you need to know. Jason Peters is saying that. 150, everyone. Let's get the likes up. Thank you, Jay Quest. All right. Let me, let me, let me, let me throw something at you here. I want to show you how hard it is to play quarterback in this league. <laughs> How many people would take Jalen Hurts over Derek Carr as a passer? How many people would take Jalen over Derek Carr, the New Orleans current quarterback, who Mickey Loomis thinks that they're going to have a pretty good year this year? Marcus says me. Jalen, Kevin. Jalen easily over Derek Carr. Jalen over Carr. Ibanez, Derek Carr. Tough call on that one, says Barb. Here, let me let me throw this at you. Here's Derek Carr's numbers last year. They were nine and eight. Sixty-eight percent completion percentage. 38-78, 25 touchdowns and eight picks. He had a better year than Jalen. Just to show you how hard it is to play quarterback from the pocket in this league. Carr was better last year. And I would never have thought that. If Hurt sucks next year, what would Howie do? I'm going to write that down. I'm going to finish this topic here. 
And I like that. What does Howie do? I didn't believe it that Derek Carr had a better year from the pocket, but he did. Jalen, because he's a winner, Carr's a loser, even though he might be a better passer. Kind of contradicts everything I'm saying here. What if Carr had Hurts' talent? Had Hurts' talent? I really do wonder. I don't think that thing sucks down in New Orleans. I think there's some ball players down there. Now, the old line is not, but Kamara, you have Michael Thomas down there. You got that kid from Ohio State, Olivier. I don't know. That doesn't seem horrible, does it? How he gave Eskin the okay to make his statement. Hertz is on the hot seat. Interesting take. Underdog records. Hey, Xander, please put that up. Underdog records. How he gave Eskin the okay to make his statement on Hertz. Hertz is on the hot seat. Very true. You think Howard Eskin, the sideline reporter for the Philadelphia Eagles, is just going to start barking out? Well, guy can't really pick up blitzes and read defenses. And I was talking to Jason Kelsey, and Jason Kelsey said that. Didn't that isn't that just like a random comment about a quarterback? It, I don't know if it puts him on the hot seat. But you know what it does? Hey, underdog, I don't know if it puts him on the hot seat, but would this be fair? It puts him on notice. W w would that be fair? It puts him on notice. What do y'all say here? Get a reporter on from NOLA so we can get the skinny on them. Okay, we'll do that, Yale. That's a good idea. We'll start going around the NFL, get people from different cities in the NFC. I like that idea. We'll start in the NFC East, and then we'll work out. And, and, and you know what, too? Yale, maybe we should do that when the schedule comes out on the 15th. We'll, we'll go and we'll look at who they're playing. You know what I'm saying? We'll wait to the 15th on that. Remind me of that. We'll wait to the 15th, so we'll look at the schedule of teams that they're going to play. I don't want to sit there and cover the Arizona Cardinals if I don't have to. <laughs> no, I think they're going to be actually good. I, okay, I think they're going to be actually good. At least the coordinators are professional. You know what? That's exactly what Xander Krause said to me before the show started. Hey, Sills, you know what my takeaway was? Professional today. Yeah. Yeah. I was impressed with Kellen Moore. Now, I was impressed with him and how he was talking about his job. Okay? Experience. That's right. That's what he said. I, 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 was, I was impressed with how he talked about his job description. You know, they were asking him questions. I heard John McMullen asking questions, too, or very own. And he was asked a question. He goes, how are you going to take the current system – and your system and mesh them together. Now I'm paraphrasing this, but that's what the essence of the question was. And I thought it was a great one because that's the conflict. And here's what makes a great coach. If I walk into a room and here, let's do this. If I walk into a room and Barb's in there, she's been in the room there for, I don't know. Three years. And she's in there with a bunch of her teammates, right? And they've been doing a certain way, something a certain way. Okay? Do I come in and tell you what to do? Or do I come in and tell you this? Hey, this is what I thought you guys did really well. So what we're going to do is take what you guys do really well 
and put you guys in the best position that I possibly can. I don't think rolling it, and I, I think that's what I got a sense of what Fangio was saying and Kellen Moore were both saying. Vic Fangio said, hey, I got to get to know the personnel better. Okay, well, get this. It's May 9th. Guys, I think you're reaching too much to think this thing's going to get turned around quick. I think the offense is going to be fine. I think they're working on terminology, how to use. Jalen Hurts is the biggest question mark. Because the quarter, get this. The, the, you guys are going to take this personal. Jalen Hurts is the biggest question mark. Because you know why? Hey, yeah, watch this. Jalen Hurts is the biggest question mark because Joe Burrow's the biggest question mark in Cincinnati. Josh Allen's the biggest question mark in Buffalo. Um, Justin Herbert is the biggest question mark in Los Angeles. Trevor Lawrence is the biggest question mark in Jacksonville. It comes with the job. I just, that's the biggest question mark in Dallas. That's right. You're, you're not going to win or lose because of your two great wide receivers. You're going to win because your quarterback upped his game. Get this. The last three years, how many people think that Devontae Smith has evolved into being a really good player? Would you agree that – Devontae Smith has evolved in being a better player than Jalen Hurts has evolved in the last three years? Would you? Josh Allen's clearly the biggest question mark in Buffalo. How many people believe that Devontae Smith has evolved into a great player and, and evolved better than Hurts? Okay. How many people believe that A.J. Brown has fit into what they're asking him to do over the last two years with 3,000 yards he's put up, right? Better than Hertz has evolved. Landon Dickerson's evolved. Jordan Malata's evolved. Wow. Jalen Hurts hasn't evolved. To some extent, Look, I'm not saying he's the weakest link in the huddle, but he's behind these other guys now. He's behind Devontae. He's behind AJ. Hey, those guys are putting it up. You can't fault those guys. You fault the quarterback, and you're going to go bad coaching. Well, okay. That's an organizational thing. Remember what I told you? It takes three things. Great ownership, coaching, player accountability. Those three things all have to sink. And, 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 and everyone, including Xander, you guys going back to 22. You know what I want to go back to? November, December games. I don't want to go back 20 games. We're moving further away from 22. Get this. 2022, when September comes, September 6th in Brazil, that is a lifetime ago now of games away that I forgot how good he was. Twist goes 23's average. Well, average is not going to win you a Super Bowl. How much harder is the quarterback position in the wideout? Joe, immensely. Incredible. Picking up blitzes, pre, pre snap reads, motivating, staying healthy, staying focused. Think about what he has to do. Think about what the quarterback has. There's only one guy in the field that touches the ball more than him, and that's the center. But think about it. Snap has to be perfect. Now they got to worry about the tush push. How's that thing going to be? Is that part of the offense still? Are you sure about that? Without Jason Kelsey in there. Are you sure that's still going to work? Well, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see, right? Okay, that's something to think about. 
snap. Well, he's got to get back. And I'm going to tell you one thing that Bill Walsh told me years ago. What do you think is the most important part of a quarterback in his evolving into being an NFL prototypical type passer? What is the number one thing he has to have for him to become a great? This is where he did not get good coaching last year. This he did, and I'm going to tell you where. Sean, thank you, my friend. Hertz will be in an offense, use motion that may open things up for him. You know what I love about your comment, Sean? That's Kellen Moore helping him more. Instead of having to read things, Kellen Moore is going to dictate defensive coverages by motion. That is a that's right there. A hey, sip 41 footwork. I'll get back to that. Sean just brought up a great point, and I heard him, and maybe it was even McMullen that asked the question about motion. Motion, what you're doing is if a, if a quarterback, okay, is not great at reading it, it was McMullen, bring, make sure you bring this up tomorrow. I said one of the great things that he does with motion that helps Dak and helps him out is that, listen, what was the one thing that became so clear last year when it was what the Bills did in that game? Okay, and what, no, what, what, the, what the Eagles did defensively and what Josh Allen did. Did you see it? What was the number one thing they did in that game? Why Josh Allen was so good in that Eagle game. Do you guys remember? Remember what they did? When I saw this, I was like, oh, my God, Sean Desai and Matt Patricia sucked massive ones. Holy cow. I can't believe how exp – I've never seen a defense exposed like that since high school. Do you remember what they did? Do you Hey, do you remember? He gets back there, and when Allen was sending, he sent motion. What, what, did the, what did the guys do? They went halfway to the field. They stopped and went back, and he knew exactly where the open seam was. They ran zone. They knew every time the Eagles were in zone through motion. You move them and get this. The Eagles are so concerned about the deep threat. They moved them back. Allen knew immediately where the open seam was and where the open space was. How many times did he do that in that game against the Eagles? Ten? They cre That's right. They created route schemes to give the open up passing schemes and easier targets for Josh Allen through basically exposing the Eagle defensive secondary in, in that game. It was so evident. Motion can do so much for you. This is why when you take the RPO out, hey, if I'm a linebacker and I got Jalen Hurts in front of me and I get 2022 Hurts in front of me, I'm doing this. I can't get too deep in my, in my drops. Why? He's reading me in my drop. If I drop too deep, he's taking off and getting five yards on me and get this, it's second and five. Shit. I lose that down. The Eagles were getting beat on first down in the second half of the season because what? They were second and eight. And when you're playing behind the sticks like that, you got to catch up. They played catch up in the second half of the season because they became predictable on what Nick Boza was saying. It's why in that Super Bowl, Senor's bringing it up. When Andy Reid was bringing motion across with the 49ers, the 49ers started getting lost. Why? Mahomes was running, and he was running RPO. That's what won that Super Bowl. Josh Allen had a career game but lost. Jalen Hurts had a career game in a Super Bowl but lost. Um, so it's a great take by – it is by John, and it's a great question because he can help Hurts out in his progression reading, by making the targets. I thought they had too hard of targets last year. How many times have I told you that Seattle game was a great example of it? They made Jalen Hurts throw into double coverage against AJ with A.J. Brown, and the guy wide open underneath, he beat his guy on an inseam or an out. And he was wide open, Devontae Smith. They didn't throw it. He threw it to the tougher throw, double coverage. Why? And to the sideline. 
I mean, you had to drop that into like a bread basket. Why didn't you make it open? He had more space. And he was running across the middle of the field because Jalen doesn't know where to throw the ball. He was being told where to throw the ball. That is going to be something to keep an eye on. The motion can help him. Now, to get back to what I said about Bill Walsh, Jalen Hurts had horrible feet last year. Drifting back to the pocket. That's got to be addressed. Testaverde drifted. Why is that important? What made Brady great? And get this. Brady couldn't jump over a stack of quarters. Nor could Peyton Manning. But what was the most important thing those men did? They got back in their seven. Check it out. You're back. You go back seven steps. The quarterback, according to Bill, that can process the information on a pre-snap read and moving his head, or sliding his feet, creating passing lanes. Those are savants of the position. Knowing where the blitzes are coming from. Being able to avoid it. What was the number one thing that used to harass Brady? Internal pressure. Because that's what knocked Brady off his spot was internal pressure. Brady at exterior pressure because he knew the front door, back door, side door. He knew how to get out of that. He knew how to get out of all those because he was coached. It, because who was coaching him? The greatest defensive coach in the history of the NFL. External pressure is not, dude, internal pressure. That's the problem. Hertz struggled not with being blitzed from the perimeter. He struggled with interior pressure. Tom Brady struggled with interior pressure. But he knew what pre-snap where it was coming from. That's what made him great. Knowing what they're trying to do. How many times did the Ravens? Yeah, but look at Twiz. This is what this is what Xander and a lot of people are saying. Well, Barkley, and somebody asked the question. I think it was Selkie that asked the question. How are we getting Barkley involved? Dude, I'll tell you one thing about Barkley. There's two things he does. Well, he can catch the ball, and you know what he's really even better at than catching it? Pass protection. Saquon Barkley's already the best pass-protecting running back you've had in three years. There is no question about that. He blows people up. He's really good at that. He's brought in for pass-catching and blowing. Dude, I'm telling you, I think if they get 900, 800 yards or 1,000 yards out of him, that's great. But you know what I think they really got him in here for? Catching the rock and blowing people up up the middle. Because he's really good at that. And he's still good at He recognizes where the blitzing is coming from. Pretty smart kid, man. You watch him on film, he kills guys. He kills guys on that. I mean, his asset's going to be protecting Hurts. But the question will be, will Hurts be able to get him the ball and check? Brady made a career out of checkdowns. Hertz doesn't check down. He throws the most difficult passes of any quarterback in the league. I mean, throw the five-yard pass. Punt. Live to live another series. It's okay. I mean, patience. I think. Brian Johnson and Nick Sirianni struggle with patience. You know why that is? It's exactly what Xander said. Experienced coordinators have patience. Punt. And if you don't win, so what? Let the offense evolve. That's what the Chiefs did with their players. The Chiefs offense was shitty all year. And as it started to get understanding of what it was doing, the players started understanding and win another Super Bowl. Dude, it's not about the regular season. If the Eagles win 10 games, but they evolve by de December being one of the better teams, who fucking cares? You know, honestly, when you guys bring up 10 and 1, it's the most insignificant thing. I get it, home field. It matters there. It does. But 10 and 1 is insignificant. How well are you playing? Hey, would you rather be 10 and 1 midway through the season or playing your best ball in December. 
a common sense answer. It's common sense. This thing is going to evolve into being, I don't know yet, how long. The Here's the biggest question marks on your offense and defense. How long will it take to install this in-game? And then what's the other most important thing? How is this going to be with in-game adjustments? You know, I heard something. This is why I'm a little excited about Kellen Moore. He said something that made me go, man, this guy's smart. Yeah, you know what he said? He goes like this. Pass protection, seam pass with a flare could mean something completely different than the left tackle. Does that mean I turn him out? Does that mean I block down? Does that, does that mean I give him an influence block? What you're telling a guy with terminology in your mind that you've been doing in Dallas and also in uh, Los Angeles, how does that affect the other 10? Do they know what you're talking about? Everyone's got to be on the same page. Because I could go like this. Hey, Kane's YG, make sure you flare block. Okay, does the left side? What does the left side do? Fan? Slip and scoop? Do they influence? Do they block down? What do you? What, what, how's that affect me? So just because you call a play, and you're Kellen, he's got to be cognizant. Okay, does this? Does the backside why? Does what route does he run? Because he may think I run an in, but in my offense, I want you to run a seam. All that has to come into play. So terminology has to mesh. Get this. Yale, they need to study the playbook. Kellen Moore needs to study the Eagle playbook of a year ago because they're going to do a lot of the same fundamentals because that's what Hurts sees. I'm not going in there and revamping a playbook. Jalen Hurts has an idea of what that all organization wants to do. You're not going to go in there with a new playbook and go, we're doing this. That doesn't fit the players you have. I mean, you gave me, dude, when you gave me a play, you know why it was easy for me to pick up the Cowboy defense when I got there? I had run it for three years in Miami. I got to Tampa Bay. I had no idea what a 34 was. I had never in my life been in a 34 from little football's junior high football. I had no idea. I have no idea. I didn't even know what the techniques were. All right, Mark Farzetta is going to join us real soon. Xander, where are we in the like button? Let's see where we are. I want to get to 200 by the top of the hour. I'd love to get to two. Sills, you should have. You should be a coordinator with Seth. Love to get and see where we are right now. All right. We're at 175, 25 away from 200. I want to get to 255 today. Please hit the like button. Mark, Mark Farsetta is going to be on the other side with us. Hit the like button, please. Keep it here on the National Football Show. If you missed any of today's show on the Jacob Media channel, listen to the podcast on your way home. Available on YouTube, Apple, and Spotify.